Hello everybody, my name's Dick Coughlin, aka Brother Neuro. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I do have to make an apology in this video. This uh, video is a response to a video that was made, I think back in January, by a very well-known user, uh, Sargon of a Card, aka Mr. Carl Benjamin. Now, in the past, I have made a couple of video responses to Sargon of a Card, um, not because I wanted to, uh, because I was paid to by people on Patreon who decided to troll me by donating a certain amount of money and then selecting a Sargon video as a reward for me to respond to. Um, however, in those videos, I didn't actually feature any footage of Carl. Uh, you didn't have to put up with uh, listening to him and looking at him uh, because he, you know, which no one should because he is fucking awful. Uh, but in this video, you're going to have to, I'm afraid. I, I just, you know, it's, it's going to have to be done. So if you don't want to deal with that, fine. I'm responding in this video to things Carl is saying. In the previous video responses I had made, um, I have to be honest, I made the videos uh, without actually watching the videos I was responding to. And uh, here's the kicker, it didn't matter. No one could tell. Uh, the reason they couldn't tell is because Carl is so predictable and obvious and his his uh, content is so uh, intellectually vapid and bland because he's just spitting out and sticking to the very very simple script it is a karaoke culture and they all sing the same fucking song his videos now it's a video he made called why women should reject cuckoldry yes and before you say anything there's no surprises coming. This video is as fucking awful as you can imagine it is. So I'm just going to crack on. We're going to do this old school style, play a clip, I'll respond, etc. <sighs> Once more onto the breach. Hit it. The more freedom one enjoys, the more personal responsibility one has to take on to avoid moral and physical degeneration. The more power one has, the more responsibility. Well, thank you. Well, that's a fucking... Well done. You know, I haven't heard that one since... Well, you know, you're, you're Spider-Man. I mean, that's the fucking level we're at here. The more power one has, the more responsibility. Tell me more about responsibility. The man who blamed feminists for Elliot Rogers' massacre... And while we're on the subject, Carl, uh, moral and physical degeneracy. I want to point something out that's quite an interesting fact. Believe it or not, me and Carl are the same age. Yes, I, we're both 40 years old. You know, our lives obviously went down very different paths. Clearly yours had a lot more chip shops in it. So anyway, carry on, Tubby. For example, if you are, say, one of uh, Orwell's Welsh coal miners from the road to Wigan Pier. Okay, I can tell you right now, without even asking, Carl has never read that fucking book, George Orwell's Road to Wigan Pier. He's probably never, in all fairness, read a fucking book. I mean, he doesn't even read the very short studies that he normally links in his in his videos that actually disprove his point, as we've, we've seen. Um, the reason I know that Carl hasn't actually read that fucking book is because uh, he said one of Orwell's Welsh coal miners. The book is called On the Road to Wigan Pier, Carl. The miners in that book are from Lancashire. But you wanted to sound intellectual by saying, let's say, for example, that you were, uh, uh, I don't know, off the top of my head, uh, um, I don't know, one of Orwell's Welsh coal miners, and your fans are going, oh, yeah, mm, mm, yeah, blah, 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 blah. wanker. And suddenly you enjoy luxury communism. You are not going to be the, the fit, healthy specimen that you once were. The fit, healthy specimen you once were. Mm -hmm. What coal mine did you used to work in? Because of the requirements of your job. I mean, I don't want to suggest that Carl is, you know, is lazy at all, you know, or, you know, but this is a man who, you know, did cocaine on a live stream, you know, a live stream that, you know, you know, live streaming, that really difficult physical task where you need to sit down on a comfortable chair. You will instead find yourself not getting any exercise. You'll probably start eating sugary foods. You'll probably turn into modern man. Turn into modern man because... You live in the past, don't you, Carl? These are... Where are you from? You're alive now. I mean, can you get more modern than that? 
And the same goes for women's sexual liberation. Of course it does. Sexual women's sexual liberation. That that's all because that's a that's something very recent. Se women's sexual rebel rebel uh, uh, liberation. Of course that's something that's got to be. We've got to be careful, ladies. Ladies, we know you've only had now. Obviously, men. We don't need to worry about the freedoms that men had uh, as a result of sex our sexual liberation because of course we didn't have any sexual liberation. We were not sexually liberated at any point because we didn't fucking have to be. We set the standards. We 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 never we were given, you know. We we had everything taken. It was women who had to be. Li who did women have to be liberated from, Carl? Oh yeah, of course it was us, wasn't it? And and of course who gave them the sense of liberating? They didn't just take it, did they? Oh yeah, we the ones who took it away in the first place. The men in power, personal responsibility. There is de there are definitely limits to how far sexual liberation should go before there are other adverse detrimental consequences. There are there are limits to sexual liberation. Of course, these limits, as he has already, you know, as you can see from what he's uh, chosen to so focus on, these limits are obviously down to, down to women's responsibility because it was easier, girls. Before we allowed you to sort of like, you know, before we, you know, created this atmosphere where a woman shouldn't have to feel uh, ashamed for anything she does in the privacy of her own home. She's a consenting adult with partners uh, of her own choosing. No, we, you know, there's a, you know, if we, we're going to, we don't mind you. We'll let you, you know, we'll let you make your own decisions. We'll let you live your own life. Um, but you've got to understand that if you're going to do that, there's going to be, uh, there's, there, are, there are adverse effects. I mean, you could argue there are adverse effects from, you know, just any kind of sex, you know, non-sexual liberation. What were the adverse effects of that? Carl, uh, well, for a start, you know, uh, people like you were born. There's, there, I mean, that's, you know, is, do I need a, do I need point B? And that's why this video is an argument as to why women should reject cuckoldry. And that is an argument, right? And I want you to say that now, argument, we have to put this very clear. Now, in the old days, Carl is obviously entering into a new uh, part, a new, a new sort of um, character arc on his, uh, in his YouTube, time as a YouTuber, because Used, used to be the case that Carl, when he was making videos, he would actually cite, um, you know, studies and, you know, data and, uh, you know, official kind of sources and that. Um, obviously, he didn't read them, but that's irrelevant because neither his fans weren't going to read it either. But he put it there. He made the effort to at least create the illusion that he had done research. This video has none of that. He's foregone that, because it's, what's the fucking point now? It's almost like a parody. I mean, maybe it's because he recognises it's a joke. But the fact of the matter is, uh, there's no, there is nothing here. In fact, if you go and watch this video, um, you know, I mean, obviously, because you hate yourself, obviously, um, you know, I recommend, make a fun, of, make fun, of, make a bit of a fun out of it, and uh, play a drinking game, and take a shot for every single point Carl makes that begins with the sentence, I think. Um, but women should reject cuckoldry. Now, cuckoldry, we have to be clear here. Um, what I think, what Carl is actually referring to is not cuckoldry in the, uh, in the, in the originally, in the, in what it originally was. He's, he's referring to it in the kind of, in the way that it's a sexual fetish where uh, a man uh, and a woman uh, will, you know, meet with another man, and uh, that other man will bang this uh, this woman, uh, the, which will be the other guy's wife or and or girlfriend, and the other guy will sit there, and, uh, and I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to sit there and enjoy it, but it's all it's all voluntary. He's not talking about the old form of cuckoldry. You know, use, traditionally what cuckoldry used to be was where, you know, strictly speaking, it's when a man is raising uh, is ra is raising a child. With, uh, that he thinks is his, but it isn't. Like he's, ra he's basically in a relationship where he's raising another man's child. So, you're a quasi-cuck, aren't you, Carl? I mean, you know it's another man's child, and as we know, that that eats you alive, kind of, you know. But, um, but it's another, you know, but, you know, so, yeah, so Carl is basically in a... Uh, but Carl, Carl doesn't mind the fact that it's another man's child. He's comfortable with that. So he's, you know, so it doesn't matter that it's, uh, so it's irrelevant, really. But of course, so, but of course, which is kind of ironic, because really, if a, someone was to, a wife, a woman was to cheat with another man on her partner, um, that would be wrong. But if they're doing it voluntarily, then it's okay. So ironic that, isn't it, Carl? On the screen is a, is a fellow called Ian Danskin. He runs a YouTube channel called Innuendo Studios, and he's a very progressive person. 
So progressive, in fact, he's a literal cuckold. So progressive, he's a literal cuckold. Because that's the end game of progressive. First of all, I want to make this clear. There's no need for Carl to bring up this guy. Because the argument uh, he's making could just be made in... I mean, it's about why women should reject cuckoldry. And the first thing he does is bring up an example, uh, which is a man. Um, now, I want to make, and I want to make this clear, um, I probably should have done, but I don't know who the fuck Ian Danskin is. I don't know about you, but I can't see the point in bringing anyone else up. And, and, and the fact that this is going to be a guy who a lot of people, most people may n have never fucking heard of. So what you're saying is, Carl, oh, I should, oh, well, look at this guy, Ian Danskin. Oh, not the Ian Danskin. Oh, God. Yeah, you are, Carl. There you are, you, you know, just, just, you're just using that old Ian Danskin magic, that fucking world. Who the fuck is Ian Danskin? I don't know or care, so why is this relevant? It's because Carl is qu trying to quasi-flex on this, because he's, you know, he's, a, he's someone who cannot feel better about himself and his, and his own uh, gender and his own sexuality, unless he's... You know, unless he's sort of like publicly flexing on someone else. And this is, so that's all this really is. Um, the whole video, really, to be fair, is just an exercise in a, a man projecting his own, you know, his own insecurities and uh, inadequacies uh, out into the world and in an attempt to try and attract people who are bigger losers than him who think he's awesome. Sadly, to be fair, this did work for Carl. You know, he's a literal cuckold. Because on the way to progress, there's different stages of cuckoldry that you will get to, um, you know, on your way to progressivism. You know, there's, um, I, I, you know, I mean, there's the metaphorical cuckold, you know, there's the figurative cuckold, there's the, the and then, you know, there's the literal cuckold, you know, he's a literal cuckold. He lets his wife sleep with other other men, and presumably he's allowed to sleep with other women. Uh, right. Presumably he's allowed to. Um, I'm sure you could have asked it. I mean, if you know this much about the guy's personal life, I'm sure you know whether or not he's let, he lets his wife. I love that expression. He lets his wife. I mean, it's right there, isn't it? It's subtle, but he lets his wife because that's how Carl thinks. You know, relationships should automatically work. That it's the woman's freedom. And the woman's behaviour is it the is it the you know is purely on the basis of the uh, permission that is granted by the man and presumably, if this guy's got enough a uh, control over the autonomy of his wife, I'm pretty sure he would use that and exercise it himself. What if they sleep with other men? He, sleep, he might sleep with other men. She might sleep with other women. I don't know. Also, can I point out, Carl? When you say he lets her sleep, that's that doesn't sound like cuckoldry. That sounds like an open relationship. You'll find this during the video that Carl doesn't, you know, I'm sure this is deliberate, um, but Carl has to, um, Carl has to, you know, sort of confuse his cuckoldry as a fetish with uh, with open relationships or with, you know, with, you know, wife swapping. These are all different things, but this is, you know, you can't expect Carl to do nuance, but of course he's, he's, Focusing on this, really, because as we know, the alt-right has an obsession with the word cuck. That's their favourite thing. Now, the reason they invented this, the reason they decided to create the word cuck is, well, because basically with the sort of restriction on, on slurs and hate speech uh, that crack down on media, they realised they couldn't use the word fag anymore, which is no one that they would obviously prefer. So they had to find another way. How can we sort of, you know, just emasculate and uh, sort of try and undermine any man who disagrees with us? How can we undermine them uh, in a way by sort of with an ad hominem? And so they chose Cuck to suggest that this is a guy who lets his wife sleep with other women. And that's, uh, you know, because that's and that's it. I mean, that's why they've got it. That's their it's, you know, that is what they they uh, they called it for. And of course, again, it's all fucking projection, you know. It's all, you know, this is, I mean, this is an atheist, by the way. I want you to put this in. This is an atheist talking about cuckoldry. This, you know, 20 years ago, you know, 10 years ago, uh, I'd have been sat here making a YouTube video to a Christian who was a rabid homophobe um, and who'd be making basically the same arguments Carl's going to make. But that's where we've come. That's how far, that's how far we've come as a society, folks. Um, so, yeah. But I don't think he's exactly slaying it, you know what I mean? Do I know what you mean? Yeah, I think I do know what you mean, Carl. That wasn't a euphemism. What do you mean he's, he's not exactly slaying it? Um, 
And how do you know? Please tell me. No, I'm curious because you seem very sure of that. You said it with this rise. Mind. I don't think he's exactly slaying it. You know what I mean? You don't know what sl which sl you know, according to what? By, by whose standards are we slaying it here, Carl? And even if he isn't, so what? That's what an open, open relationship, Carl, doesn't mean that you are obliged to just spend your, you know, just doing nothing from dawn till dusk. You know, you don't have to be the iron chef of pounding van. It's just that if you want to, it's open relationship. It doesn't mean we're going to go out and bang everything that fucking moves. Um, and also, Carl, again, I hate to break this, but who the fuck are you to judge any other man? OK, so Ian, Ian this Ian Geezer. OK, so he's not exactly, you know, he's not exactly Tom Higgleston. I'm just saying that because I've got a bit of a crush on Tom Higgleston. But the, uh, I'm just, you know, but so what? You know, you know, who knows? Maybe he's got a huge cock. Did that, did that ever cross your mind? You fuck, call, fucking right it has. You fucking know it has, Cole. You thought about this a lot. You must have considered the option that he might be hanging dong here. He might have a fucking dick that looks like a midget in a fucking, you know, cock suit. Or maybe he's got a nine inch tongue and he can breathe through his fucking ears. You know, that sometimes the best looking, sometimes men who are not the best looking chaps in the world can, you know, can, you know, have a, a way with women that's just, you know, completely in incomprehensible to men like you. Starting from why the man should re reject this, but this is a much smaller part of this argument. Yeah, we're going to start with why the man should reject this, but it's a very small part of the argument. Yes, it is. It's a, it's a very small part, isn't it, Carl? The part is very small. You're about to start with the smallest part. That's a euphemism, Carl, if you know what I mean. Uh, there, are, there seem to be lots of beta males who are happy with their girlfriend's partners sleeping with other men. People like Steve Bonnell, uh, Ian Danskin, there, there are a bunch of them. You'll f Steve Bonnell, by the way, is Destiny, the YouTuber Destiny, who I've only just a couple of months ago become familiar with. Um, I, I, and again, uh, but if you don't know who he is, why do you fucking care? Um, is this is this really is is this about you know the fact that Destiny's kind of owned you in a few debates? I think it is, yeah. So you, there's no need again, no need to bring him up. Um, and of course, beta males. He has to say beta males. And I'm so glad you pointed out that these are beta male calls. Thus you know, sort of implying that you're an alpha. There's nothing more alpha male than telling people who the beta males are. Because there's no, there is no greater expression. If you want to, you know, show your, show a woman how confident and alpha and dominant you are, what you do is you sit there in judgment of uh, the lives that other, other people and the things that they choose to do uh, with their own lives, and then what you do is you uh, you you decide to because you don't like it, you become obsessed with these people and demonise them in a way, and then you observe all these other relationships, and then you decide to make a YouTube video uh, that's 15 minutes long in which you lecture people as to why this is bad, and uh, then you tell then you blame it on women. That's I mean, there's no greater expression of confidence. And of course, the beta male thing. Okay, it's so sad watching this. The but you know this alpha beta thing. You know, you want to talk about how you're trying to you know d destroy everything has to be binary with you lot, doesn't it? Everything has to be one thing or another. There's only two of anything in it. It's either good or bad. It's one side or the other. And even when you look into a group, it's just alphas and betas. Right there, you know, you, you don't want to. I mean, is there anything that sort of undermines or devalues? Any foot group, any group whatsoever, then suggesting that you've got to be one or the other. Because, and you don't want to be a beta. They're the people who come last, aren't they? And of course, if you're someone who finishes last in a race, you know, like someone who got the least amount of votes in the constituency where they ran for to be a member of the European Parliament. If you if you if you're, if you're those guys, then you know you might as well not be in the race at all. If you're going to be a fucking loser. Why don't you just make a video call, Cole, called I've got a massive dick and I'm great in bed and just sit there just saying that over and over again. This is a fucking comb over for your own fucking inadequacy. It's just my opinion. Though. You'll find them everywhere. Common for male feminists. But there's loads of them. There's loads of them, right? This whole video, the response could just be a screen, a two second video with just citation needed. You know, he's, got, he's not going to name any of them. He's just, but there's loads. Trust me, there's loads. There's fucking loads. And I think this is very destructive. Well, I wipe a monkey's ass with what you think, Carl. What does it matter what you think? It's destructive. Okay, don't do it then. Oh, you don't? 
Well, then fuck off. Not only is it bad for the self-esteem of that guy. Yes, it's very bad for the self-esteem of that beta male cuck, that fucking, you know, that worthless piece of shit. The the idea of allowing your woman to to sleep with whoever she wants as long as she comes back to you. Again, your woman. She's not your woman, Carl. She doesn't belong to you. It's not up to you. And if she wants to do that, and you're not comfortable with that, then guess what? You move on. That is not something I think is going to raise pride in oneself. <clears throat> pride in oneself. You judge... Let me get this straight. You, you, the pride... Your pride, your sense of self, your sense of pride is, 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 is dependent on how much your partner wants to sleep with other people. You do realise, Carl, that there's nothing wrong with, if you're in a relationship, there's nothing wrong with wanting to sleep with other people. You don't stop finding people attractive just because you're in a relationship, right? You're allowed to look at people and go, hmm, I'd bang them. And if you happen to be in a relationship where that's okay, then yeah. But if, yeah, if you're not into that, if that's something you're not into, or if that's something that, you know, only one person wants, then yes, it is very destructive. Which I assume is why a lot, very few people want, you know, who, who very few people who think that way are in those situations. Uh, I think it's actually a, a destructive formula for a relationship. Not an open relationship, Carl. It's actually the formula for an open relationship. Tell me again. But, I mean, you know, again, what, what, what gives you? Okay, you're married. Fine. Okay, is your wife happy? Right. Just, that's, that's semi-rhetorical. I mean, I mean, she was with someone else when, you know, previous, that's, you know, that's why, you know, one of your kids isn't yours, you know, and she, and she's with you. You know, I mean, that, I mean, who, I, I want to know, I want to meet that guy. I'm, I want to, I don't believe he exists. Just think this, I mean, the poor, I feel sorry for your missus. You're the best. She met at least two geezers in her life and you were the best one. You're the, the other guy was so bad. He made you likable and attractive. Assuming she's with you because she likes your personality. <laughs> yeah, I would assume that, Carl just finds the sex with you dull or rote or inadequate. I like how Carl clearly went on thesaurus.com to find that, obviously, and, uh, you know, uh, these, are, these are these, but yes, presumably that's the only reason. She likes your personality, uh, but sex is boring, you know. So the only solution is cuckoldry or an open relationship or, you know, that's it, you know. Uh, allowing her to sleep with other men, well, eventually she's going to sleep with the guy whose personality she likes and then she'll leave you. And there we have it. Thank you. Of course, now it makes sense. This is why you hate the idea of open relationships of Carl, because if I was you, Carl, I would be terrified that my wife's going to meet someone with another personality. But, you know, considering all she would have to do is go outside the house, walk 10 yards until she bumps into, I don't know, the fucking postman. Do you have your missus tied up in a fucking in a, in a dungeon? I'm, I'm, I'm you know, shouldn't really say that because let's be honest, it's not completely out of the realms of it. You know, what do you mean? She might meet someone with a better personality because obviously, outside of an open relationship, women never talk to other men. Women never fucking meet other men who who they find better, who've got better personalities. This is Sargon of a card talking about me, talking about people with great personalities. The man who could have been entertainment officer on the Titanic. Jesus Christ. This is something that I've seen happen to beta male feminists many times. Oh, well, let's just deconstruct that for a second, shall we? This is something you've seen happen to beta male feminists many times. Let's just, now we'll just skip over the fact that the two beta male feminists who you've mentioned are Steve Bonnell and uh, this Ian Geezer, both of whom are currently in relationships. So you can't use them as an example. But you've seen it happen many, many times. D does anyone else find it, I don't know, a little bit odd that Carl spends his time... Because you don't hang around with, you know, you know, I mean, you know in, in the circles you mix, you don't exactly hang around with um, with uh, beta male feminists quite a lot. You know, but you've observed them from a distance, like a fucking bird watcher, 
right? You observe them. You're like Diane Fossey, right? But instead of gorillas in the mist, it's cucks, it's cucks on their own. You know, what, what, can you please elaborate on that, Carl? Because I don't know about you, I find it, if I met a geezer who was in a relation, relationship and him and his missus engaged in cuckoldry or they're in an open relationship, and I know people who are, um, I don't find that weird. If I met a geezer who sat me down and decided to tell me about all about that he spends his t a lot of his time, his free time, watching and observing the sex lives of other people. Yeah, there's nothing more alpha than that, is it? You know, obsessing over other people's sex lives and you know make and observations, observations. Many times he said as well, many times. So he does this a lot. I think that sounds a little gay. And there's nothing wrong with that, Carl. Is there? And so I, w I would just skip it. If she, if she, if you can't satisfy this girl, and for some reason this is going to destroy your relationship, let it go. Just let it go. Can't hold me back anymore. Let it go. Let it go. Run away and close the door. I don't mind what they're going to say. Boom, boom, boom. The cold never bothered me anyway. But yeah, you're right, Carl. Yeah, if if it's if it's if it's something you're not into in the relationship, wow, what what fucking amazing advice. Brilliant. You fucking cunt. The worst, the worst thing about it is, <clears throat> I think it puts the the beta male in a position where he he knows that he's always going to be the loser, and there's no form of self improvement or or the. He's always in the position where he's losing. Yeah, that's the turn on in a way, Carl. With with, with cuckoldry anyway. Again, open relationships not about that. Open relationships are about equality. Um, it's equal. But cuckoldry and cuckoldry. There's nothing. Uh, there's nothing unequal about that. Uh, but it puts the man in a position where he, there's going to. He's always going to be the loser. That's kind of the thing in it, Carl. But it, it, it just so happens that. You know, uh, it just so happens that, you know, these are guys who are turned on. It's called a humiliation fetish, you know. It's not a sign of a broken person. It just means that's what you're into. And hey, of all the things that you could be into in this world, if you're turned on by the idea of your missus banging other people, that sounds like a bit of something that could be an advantage. As opposed to you, you know. And so much, you know, if a, if a man is within 400 fucking miles of your missus and coughs in her general direction, apparently you sit up in judgment of her. But yes, so the man's always going to be a loser. The beta male, this loser is always going to be a loser. And there's no room for self-improvement. What size waist are you, Carl? He never feels like a winner. And again, as we all know, when it comes to not winning at something, Carl's got experience in that. Oh, by the way, I dyed my hair this colour just for this video. Figured if you're going to go full SJW, yeah, big red's out, right? You know, he never he never feels like he wins at something. He's taking pleasure in humiliation of himself, and maybe he does find pleasure in that. I don't know. Yes, Carl, you've just literally... That's what I just said. You've literally just described what's part of the whole thing. He takes pleasure in his own humiliation. You know... Some people do that. People take pleasure in lots of different things, Carl. These guys happen to take pleasure in that. Some people take ple find pleasure in lots of bizarre. That's what that's what kinks and fetishes kind of. That's the definition, really. Is someone who takes pleasure in something that's a little bit unusual. They're all specific, Carl. You know, and if these things didn't turn them on, the fact that you can find them in pornography. Was kind of a bit of a bit of a giveaway, wouldn't it? Because you wouldn't sit there and go, "I'm going to masturbate to something that that makes me feel like a loser," unless you're someone who is turned on by that. End of video. No. I think it always go it, it is always going to lead to a loss of respect from one's partner. Of course, Sargon of Akkad's wife could not possibly lose any respect for him because I don't think respect, whatever unit it's measured in, can go into negative. There's no deficit. If there was, you'd be Zimbabwe. And I think that putting another man in a more senior position hierarchically in the relationship. That's you in a nutshell right there, isn't it? Hierarchy. There's a hierarchy, right? 
No, there's three people, Carl, and all of them are getting off. That's the end result. The end result is equal. Right? All, all, everyone in that scenario, there's no hierarchy. There's a hierarchy. Just think about that. He thinks that there's a higher, there is a natural hierarchy in, in society that is deemed, ba that is based on sexual, on sexual experience. Are you fucking someone right now? Then you are higher up. You're a further up the hierarchy than me. Cause I'm not fucking someone right now. Uh, do you drop back down just in between fucking that someone? I'd like to know more about this, Carl. If he uses the word sexual Marxism, I'm bailing on this video. Uh, I do think that the desire for cuckoldry will probably be uneven. Because one thing we know about Carl is that he hates the idea of any form of inequality uh, between men and women. We know that, I mean, this is a cause he is very, very concerned with. And of course, and again, I think, okay, yeah, yeah, you know what, Carl? Uh, you know, first of all, I like the way that he thinks that when, you know, when people are discussing certain kinks and fetishes, I, hope, I love the way he thinks the idea that the man's just going to go, you know what, love? I think I'd love to jack off in the corner whilst some other guy bangs you. What do you reckon? As if, he, you know, like, that's the way it is. You know, there's, you know, you just, you, you just steam it right in there. There's no sort of like, you know, that's how it works in Carl's mind. Because, of course, Carl has never had to discuss any sort of idea of kink or fetish because that's something that's that's you know clearly something that's uh, degeneracy i mean carl knows two sexual positions one of them is conscious it might be that the man likes the idea and the woman's like well okay i mean if you want me to it's impossible for two people to be into something it's just that's it what do you do now you started this uh this process and so I, th I think the desire will always be uneven and i think this inequality of desire becomes a commitment to a power inequality mm, a power inequality so what you're saying is it's uh i mean it's a it, what you're saying is it would be a privilege wouldn't it you know it would give someone an advantage over another they would have they would be able to control someone you know i mean not in a not in an actual sense you know not in a sort of like Definite sense, like, you know, like the way someone would be in, in, in power. You know, I love that. He thinks that someone in a relationship being into something uh, and the other person sort of maybe being curious or, you know, you know, not being appalled enough to say, yeah, OK, let's give it a go. Because, of course, you can do that as well, Carl. You can try stuff and not be into it. Um, but no, he's concerned about that power equality, that power inequality. But when you talk about the idea that, hey, have you noticed that most of the people who own and control and run everything, have you noticed how many of them are straight white men? Oh, no, there's no, there's no need to worry about that. Because let's assume out of the blue to say, hey, why don't we try cockoldry <laughs> to each other one day? Yeah, 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 there's a very good reason why, you know, you're laughing at that, Carl, because it sounds ridiculous, because that's not how it works. You wouldn't just say, hey, you ever thought about trying, should we just try cuckold? You know, do you know, Dave's always thought you were quite hot. You don't bring this up, Carl. Again, you know, I mean, I know that idea is hilarious. You know, I mean, for you, you know, the idea would be, you know, darling, I think tonight I might sleep in just my pyjama bottoms. I, tonight, darling, we're keeping the lights on. I may even take my socks off. Yeah, I was thinking that too. And they, they both agree. If that's how the conversation went, Carl, there's nothing to worry about. And also, again, if that does happen, if the guy says that, or even the woman says that, and the other one says, yeah, that sounds great, instantly, what's the problem? I'm still waiting, Carl. What has it got to do with you? It's none of your business. I don't think that Ian is going to get as many ladies as his girlfriend is going to get men. Do you ever think, Carl, of maybe getting a hobby? You seem to spend a lot of time thinking about other people's sex lives. And there's generally only one reason why anybody would do that. Because simply there is, there is just less value in Ian sexually than there is in his girlfriend. Because obviously Carl is the one to sit here and judge other men's sexual value. So let's get it right, Carl. You're, you know, you, you, you're obsessed. With, you know, you, you can judge him 
by you're judging him by his appearance you're judging him by his value in the sexual marketplace and you're constantly thinking about how this relationship works i mean you seem to i mean you've probably thought about it more than they have right i can tell you this carl maybe if you put some more thought into your own fucking personal life not that i want to know not that anyone wants to know no one wants to see that you know I might look out of curiosity. Uh, she's the one who's going to be holding, uh, carrying the baby. She's the one who has the primacy and importance when it comes to that. <clears throat> well, maybe, Carl, here's an idea. Have you ever considered the possibility that some people, maybe, they, th when they fuck someone, it's, it's not just for the purposes of, of having a baby? Certainly not cuckoldry would be uh, for having a baby. Some people, Carl, and you might want to try this one day, some people just fuck for the purposes of recreation. It's fun. You know, not ev you don't have to have a baby every time. Sometimes just do it because, hey, you know, <clears throat> jump on it. No? Okay. Isn't it interesting that you know, one of the biggest, you know, gripes about feminists that used that, that used to come from the anti-feminist movement was how feminists and uh, and 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 these uh, gender communists and SJWs they were how they're so they're puritans they're so they're such puritans they want to destroy the you know sex they're trying to destroy sex for fun and 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 here we have here we have Carl of a Sargon of a card who has the qualification of being a fat bloke on the internet, right? Here we have Carl sitting here, literally doing that, policing other people's freedom, policing other people's, and for some reason, blaming this, all putting the responsibility for this all on the woman. Personal responsibility. What sexual marketplace? What would you be? You'd be a. You wouldn't even be a fucking penny stock. You'd have to trade you in lira. It's very easy to find a man to impregnate a woman. Most women could probably go out and just organise. I mean, there there have been. I love how he just trailed off. Then most women could probably go out and uh, organise and uh, you know because you know you notice though that this doesn't happen. This whole thing, you know, people always bring this up going, oh, if a woman wanted to go out, she could just ask ask a random man. She could ask men, uh, can, can, can you please impregnate me? And, and another, th I love the fact also, Carl, that these, you know, these are the same men. Again, this, this, his audience who are going to be fucking sitting there going along with this. You are, let's ask these cunts about the, uh, about child support. Let's ask these fuckers how they feel about about women who get money, about men who pay, you know, about the fact there's laws for child support. You know, if you have a kid with someone and it wasn't intentional, you know, but, but, you know, but then you sit there and talk, talk about how men can go out and they'll, you know, if you ask a man to impregnate you, it'll be fine. Personal responsibility. Just like man on the streets, like Tess, where an attractive woman will go up to a guy and say, hi, would you like to have sex? And then an attractive man will go up to women and say, hi, would you like to have sex? Zero women say yes to the man, even though he's a really good looking guy. Half of the men that the woman approached said yes. So... And I know this because I went out and asked women if they would like to have sex with me, and uh, they all said no. You know, all of them. I know. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I found. You know. And uh, whereas I would have banged all of these women, uh, and you know, and I'm Carl Benjamin. I mean, I like. You know, I'm not saying. You know, again, this is just all based on assumption. This is all based on assumption. You know, part of the reason for that, Carl. Do you know, one reason why why that might be is um, it, you know, it's just because you know, just randomly someone coming up to you in the street and randomly asking you to fuck them, even if they're attractive, that's kind of weird. It's kind of strange, and it and you can sit there. People sit there and go, oh, me, most men would say yes, and most women would say no. Part of that could be the fact that you know, when men bang women, the more women a man bangs, the more. He can brag about that. But the more, you know, random men a, a woman bangs, you know, that's uh, something that she, you know, is made to feel shame, shame and dirty about. Um, the other reason could be um, that, it, that it just doesn't happen, Carl. It just doesn't fucking happen. Let's not fool ourselves. It's much more difficult for men to just get 
get laid and find partners very easily, it's much more easy for a woman to do it. So, I, and I think that this natural power imbalance, I mean, th this is what I think the root of monogamous relationships actually is. Oh, yes, let's talk about the root of monogamous... Carl, the root of monogamous relationships is simple. Most people are just... That's the way they prefer it. It's... You know, that's it. I personally never been in an open relationship. You know, never... Do, and I wouldn't want to be. It's nothing to do with a power structure. Right? And I love how you just generalise, like, well, men... would be, men, uh, Some men, yeah. Some women, right? You know, do you ever talk to women, Carl? Do you ever talk to lots of women? Do you ever just sit there and have you ever gone round and ask? Uh, because I, you know, because I know I've known lots of women who, you know, some of whom were reasonably physically attractive. You know, they didn't all look like a bag of pork scratchings glued to a welder's bench, and and they would disagree on this idea. But also, you know, it's just kind of fucking. You don't know who these people are. It's kind of a dangerous situation to put yourself in, isn't it? You know, but don't sit it just because there's an imbalance there, just because women have decided they're going to be a bit more discerning and men are going to be indiscriminate fuck machines who just, you know, would stick it, would basically have sex with a packet of crisps. Right. Which I'm sure you've never done. Right. But I love how that's the power imbalance. So we you know, what. Right. And what do you want us to do about that car? Do you know what else is a power imbalance? You know, women can get pregnant and men can't. That's a that's an imbalance, isn't it? What do you want to see? Should we do something about that? And I think there will end up being lasting resentment from whichever partner was cucked and enjoyed it less. Okay, okay, that didn't make sense. Whichever partner was cucked and enjoyed it less, and there will be resentment. Yes, you know, because that that's the you know because that's Carl's maturity. You know, if the idea that you know if he was having sex, like if he was fucking, uh, he, if he was fucking his wife, you know. You know, you know, having, you know, which I'm sure is an event that happens on a on, on a biannual basis. If he was doing that, you know, um, I, I'm sure, you know, and, and he didn't come. But she she fell asleep. She just rolled over after two minutes, farted and went to sleep. I'm sure Carl would be, you know, you know, I'm sure I'm, I'm positive. Carl would, you know, you know, not think, well, there's something maybe, you know, wrong with me. No, there'd be resentment there, wouldn't there? There'd be resentment. You know, you resent people. You would resent some. So you've got to enjoy sex as much as he could. How do you even measure that? You know, someone could enjoy something, but not massively enjoy it. You know, the same way that you can get a boner, that's some regular boner, but sometimes, sometimes you get into situations and you, you get this thing, oh, Jesus Christ, this is basically, you know, could someone call NASA? We found something denser than dark matter. I could take a hubcap of an armoured arm V with this fucker. Right? If there's a riot going on, get me over there. I'll fucking hose the bastards down. You know, but we can't quantify quanti enjoyment. Enjoyment in sex has to be equal, or there'll be resentment. Because that's the level of maturity in you. Is that if you didn't enjoy sex as much, you'd resent them. You wouldn't think it was your problem. It's. I think it's bad for the man. I think it's bad for the relationship, and I think it's it's. Probably bad for the woman as well. I'm sorry. It just, it just, it's bad for the man. It's bad for the relationship. And... Oh, God, see, men. The relationship. I think, who, who's the relation? Hold on. Who's there? There's another group, isn't there? You're supposed to give a shit. Oh, yeah. And uh, oh, it's probably bad for the woman as well. It's probably bad for the woman. So you're not sure. But you're certain enough to say... That it's definitely the woman who should do something about this. And you wonder, Carl. You wonder why people... Think, you, it took you three seconds of silence and consideration after saying men to give a shit, probably, about women. Fidelity is a virtue. I'm sorry, Carl. Did you just say virtue? Carry on. It is virtuous. It is virtuous. And and you're saying this, it's a good thing to be for the, that it's virtuous, is it? Right. You know, and you're, 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 you're telling people that, you know, this is a good thing and it's something you should do. You're, you're, you're in fact, you are signalling 
to people about, you know, what you consider to be virtuous and a virtue, you know. I don't know about you, does that sound, there's a word for that, isn't there? When people, sign, you know, when people, uh, you know, try and, in, try and impose their own beliefs and ideas about what is virtuous onto other people. And I, you know, I can, I'm definitely certain that there are, that, that you know, that there was a big group of people who, who thought that that was a bad thing. Virtue, virtue signaling. Yeah. Hmm. To show loyal, um, you know, not unquestioning, but yeah, not unquestioning, but I mean, I mean, I mean, slightly questioning. You know, don't question everything. You know, nothing worse, is it? You meet a woman, everything's fine, and then about a year, eighteen months, two years, and they start asking questions like, "Hey, who are you?" Firm and strong loyalty for good reason to someone because of. A pre-existing relationship. What do you mean a pre-existing relationship? You mean because you're in a relationship. You talk about it like it's a disease. Well, in your case... Yeah, but it's, it's like a covenant, right? A covenant. You know, like the one God promised the Israelites. Yes, of course, yes. It's a covenant. It is It is a bond sealed for eternity. In, you fucking dr melodramatic prat. I, I, I will be your girlfriend, you'll be my boyfriend, and we will be faithful to one another. Yeah, yeah, Carl, see, if that's the established agreement at the start, then yeah. Otherwise, it's called cheating. It's called infidelity. And that happens a lot. You know that, Carl. You know that people, men and women, who are married or with someone else, you know they, they, they do cheat on each other quite a lot. Sometimes. Sometimes people do it without even knowing. Sometimes it happens and the other person has no idea. Cuckolds or open relationships are just people who are saying, if you want to, you can. It don't bother me. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Do you have someone who looks after you? And if a man is asking a woman, hey, look, would you like, I, I'd like to sleep with a guy and I'd like to watch or whatever it is. Um, in a way, that is forcing a woman to abandon this virtue. So, a man, uh, a man having a kink or a fetish, in this case, watching his partner get fucked by someone else, and him asking her if she'd be up to that, is forcing women to give up this virtue. Of course, if a man forced his penis into you, Women have got to take some personal responsibility on that one. But asking someone, asking if someone would like to be, you know, consent to something, that is forcing women to give up a virtue. And as we all know, I mean, if this, this all, we can all agree on this, I know that, that all of us out there, man or woman, what you're looking for in a partner is someone is who, you know, who lives their lives by the standards and the virtues of Sargon of Akkad. You know, she might be she might be doing it at your request, but she's still not being virtuous. Yes, and of course, she's doing something. She's not being virtuous. Everything must be virtuous. Everything's got to be honourable. Everything, you can't, I mean, this is, we're talking about sex here, people. And if sex cannot be done with any virtue or nobility, then what the hell can? What the fuck are you talking about, Carl? You're saying people shouldn't ask their partners if they're interested or they'd be into something on the basis that it would be them abandoning a virtue. A virtue which, by the way, they don't believe ex is, exists. To them, it's not. And it's not, it's only, it's, you know, for, infidelity is not happening in this case. In an open relationship or an act of cuckoldry or anything like this, Sleeping with other people is not, you know, is not an unvirtuous act. It is not an act that is immoral because they don't, that's because, do you know why? Because, because that's the way they feel. And they have every right to feel that way. It would be like someone, it would be like someone who's into this, 
making a video about how people like you, you know, you know, people like you, you're forcing your woman to be a to be a frigid, dry, dried up old, miserable fucking, you know, who gets fucked twice a year and has to fucking, you know, you know, she only ever takes her knickers off to give her plunger dusting. Would that be okay with you, Carl? This is something that wider society views as virtuous, that whatever will view as virtuous. Wider society? Wait, Carl, are you making... You wouldn't be making an argument ad populum here, would you? I don't know if you're familiar with this, Carl, and I hate to go back a little bit here because I do realise that this is, you know, this is pre-nursery school level lessons in logic. But, Carl, an argument ad populum is a very, very risky game to go down, particularly as a man who, um, you know, you, you, cl you know you, you're an atheist, let's take that. You know, should we sit here, do you know that the, you know, wider society, according to them, people like you, Carl, you know, are wrong, you're going to burn in hell. You know, you deserve to as well, and you don't have a moral compass. Um, you do realise as well, Carl, that you were, um, you were in an election, and you came last in that election and you lost the seat for the party you represented. In fact, the party you represented lost all their seats. So let's not sit here, shall we? And shall we say, judge and say what wider society thinks. There was a time, Carl, when wider society would be saying some very nasty and unpleasant things about your wife because she was in a relationship with another guy, she had a baby with him, and then they split up, and now she's with you. So people would be, well, she would be fucking harangued and pelted with vegetables, and would be branded an irresponsible whore. That's what wider society fucking think. What the fuck are you talking about? Wider society. You're, that's a dangerous road for someone like you to go down. So I think that it's, it's rendering the woman with a lower moral status in the eyes of wider society. It's rendering women with a lower moral status. And you think, I love that. So what we've got here is two adults have, you know, engaging in an act of sexual, a sexual act, a, a, which is, you know, a, a particular sexual fetish, consenting in the privacy of their own home, or someone else's, they're not fucking, you know, they're not, they're not forcing anyone else to do it. It's just what they want to do. They enjoy it. And that is, and, and, and society, you're right, Carl. Society would look on that as, you know, uh, people would be funny about that. People would look in judgment. People would do it negative. And the, you think the problem is, you think the problem is, not wider society's um, ignorance and, and small mindedness or or own personal sense of uh, personal ignorance. No, it's it's that it's those people who are doing nothing wrong, who are hurting no one. They should they're the problem. They should consider whenever you do anything, people, you should consider what other people think. You should consider what wider society thinks. I mean, if you want to defend that, if you're a Sargon fan, you want to defend that, be my guest. But I don't think we, you know, that's something that we all should really, uh, you know, <laughs> be very careful about. You know, I certainly wouldn't, Carl. I mean, let's say, Carl, what a major, what does major society? Actually, let's go back there, because when you were going through that uh, that election campaign, uh what did wider society? What do you think wider society thinks of you? Because during the two week, three week period when you were running to be uh, a member of parliament, um, you became known. In the, it was one. It was quite impressive because it was one of the few times in my life when every mainstream media outlet across the political spectrum, whether it was the Daily Express, the Daily Mail, the Telegraph. The Times, the BBC, The Independent, The Guardian, The Observer, all of them rinsed you throughout for the whole two weeks. Every single fucking stupid, ignorant, bigoted, hateful, moronic, awful thing you have ever said 
was broadcast from stuff about the Jews, stuff about black people, stuff about feminists, stuff, all of it just came flooding out, even to the point where the UKIP, the, guy, the people who were in charge, or, 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 who were members of UKIP and were in the hierarchical positions of UKIP, were coming out and condemning you, right? So you were known, the most common way of describing, you weren't even known as Carl Benjamin, you were known as the rape tweet candidate. Now, so, and this was in the sun several times. The ma you know, m tens of millions of people would have, would have read these stories. And I ask you, Carl, if I was to, and most people, and that's the majority of people, if you ask the majority of people who, re who, who recognise you and know your name, most of them would say, oh, that's that disgust, that's that fucking, that's that horrible right-wing racist, you know, anti-Semitic, you know, sexist fucking, you know, that's, the, that's that rape tweet guy. That's that rape tweet UKIP member. That's what wider society think of you, Carl. And I know, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, oh, that was a hit job by the media. That was, a, that was all lies and distortions and out of context. And you know what? Fine. Let's say that's true. I will live in the same fantasy world you do where that is true, right? If that's true, that is exactly the reason why, Carl, you should never, ever make an argument ad populum and you should never legislate based on what wider society thinks because as that fuck as the example i've just given of you your own fucking of your own fucking example of your own experience of being you know spread all over mainstream news and you know broadcast to the whole country you know the peak of your fucking of your relevance right as you should know that is the reason why you'd never ever Make an argument ad populum, or you never judge things on wide society, because guess what? They can be fucking wrong. I mean, if we still lived in the time when interracial relationships were considered taboo, would you defend that? What about gay marriage? What about homosexuality? Would you defend that? Would you defend, you know, people who, you know, the time when wider society thought that was discussed? In fact, Carl... What point do you think history got? Where was the point where history, you know, in history, where mankind suddenly, wider, the opinions of wider society when it came to other people's personal preferences, when that became, <coughs> you know, all equal and we didn't have to, we, we, and we, 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 we knew enough. And I think that's bad. I think that's, that's bad for the woman herself. I, I mean, ladies, Carl, Carl Benjamin thinks that's bad for you. He thinks that's bad for you. And he thinks that you are not capable of figuring that out for yourself. He thinks you're, he thinks that, he, he thinks that you need to be told this by him. A man, a man who, a man whose fucking personal sexual exploits would probably make Mary Whitehouse look like Jenna Jameson, right? He th this fucking bearded blob on the internet is, has decreed that it's bad for you based on literally fuck all, apart from his own personal insecurities. Because obviously, let's face it, Carl's had, you know, Carl has been with women who have cheated on him, no question. And let's be honest, right? Even though he's married and he's, you know, and he, one of the children that he looks after is not his, that, that child is a reminder to Carl that his wife once fucked someone else, you know. And. I mean, I, I mean, one but virtuous lady. I mean, virtuous. No one, no one looks at that and thinks, "Oh, that's respectable." No one looks at that and thinks, "Do you know what, Carl?" Most people <coughs> don't know about stuff like that because, funnily enough, this is why it's called private life. This is why it's uh, it's none of your fucking business. Do you honestly think, Carl? That any, seeing as how you said they're beta male feminists, right? do you think those people, and do you think the people that you're aiming this at, you've already made the mistake of generalising the types of people who do this based on a politic, based on their, their politics. So yeah, you know, you know, but identity politics, yada, yada, yada. You know, you've already done that. Do you think those people are going to be convinced by the argument, or well, Sargon of a card? You, you know, I don't believe any man 
ever in the, you know, and never will, never will they. Here's, here's a baseless assertion. No man or woman at any point in their lives, regardless whether they're doing the most fucking de de just disgusting, perverted, deviant shit you can fucking imagine, right, ever, none of them are going to at any point before, during or after that act stop and go, hmm, I wonder whether Sargon would have approved of that. You think that's bad. There are lots of things you think are bad, Carl. And a lot of those things that you think are bad are things that other people would like to enact as fucking policy within government. You really are a sad sack of shit. You know that. You know, no matter, no matter how complex a, a, an argument the whichever partner makes for the the joys of doing this and hell it, it'll be just fine i don't think that anyone really believes it so what you've just done so can we just say what he's just done there is he has basically said that you know even if even if you know two people sit there and they they assure you that no we like this this is fun we're into this we're perfectly okay with it and even if they explain in in you in, know in, in complex detail as if you carl are the one to sit there what a fuck a complex argument a complex you just made an argument ad populum Right. You just sat there and said, well, you know, well, most people would think this is not respectable. You want to sit there and say that what most people think is not respectable should be considered an, an act of virtue because that's what people think. And now you're sat there saying, even if someone tells you, even if someone sits there and, you know, and they're perfectly fine and they, they explain it to you and they educate you on it. You've just said, I don't believe you say that. You, you, you call yourself an atheist, but deep down you know God is real. What the fucking hell? What are you... Seriously? Just become a fucking Christian, Carl. Or an Islamic fuck... Or, Is or, or an imam. Just fucking embrace it. Because it's in the post, isn't it? That's all you do. I mean, you've just sat there and said, you don't believe people. Because you cannot... Because you're, you're fucking... You are so... In, you know, un, un, unimpeachably insecure. You are so irredeemably filled with so much self-loathing. You hate yourself so much that the only way you can possibly live in this world is if the way that you think about other, the things that you consider to be important and that define you, right, and that and that you know give you value or worth in society. Right? All of those things, they have to be either done the way that you think they should be done or they should be done in the way that you have done them. That has to be the case. It can't be that, well, everyone's different. Everyone's different. You know, people are different. People are complicated. And some people, you know, sometimes you meet people who are all into different things, who are all into, you know, and, and you know, you've got to take people, you know, and you shouldn't judge people just because they're into something or they do something that you don't understand. That's it, isn't it, Carl? And it's not respectable. Because you say what's respectable. Because you're a respected man, ain't you? I've had fucking turds come out of my ass that I had more respect for than you. And some of them have at least engaged in penetration. Right Now you are going to sit there and tell other people. What do you and your wife get? Tell me, Carl, because I think... No, no, I, I think it's important. Because you're going to sit there and suggest that... You know, you're going to sit there and try and... You know, you're trying basically to you know, emasculate, and you're trying to put the blame of, you know, the degradation of society and, you know, relation, and it's all, you know, it's the, the destruction of virtue, and you're going to sit there and preach this, then I'm afraid, right, I'm afraid it is fucking, you know, me, for me to sit here and at least maybe consider, take you seriously, I think I have a right to sit here and know what the fuck do you get up to in your private time. What do you and your missus engage in? How often do you do it? What positions? Right? What's the most you've ever done it in? Go, hey, come on. What do you look at? I mean, I suppose I could. One thing I could do is, I, you know, I, I could say, you know, show me your internet browser history. Hold on, I don't have to ask you that because 
We already know your internet browser history. Right now, some of you may remember this, and uh, and I'm gonna and at the time it was just funny, you know, because like it's always funny to look at any man's internet browser history. Trust me, if you looked at fights, looked in, if you looked at mine, you would find shit in there that's probably illegal in the Philippines. But you, you, you know, the thing is, with Carl now, this becomes, with this video, it becomes even more interesting. Now, Carl made a video, uh, it was still, it's still up online, it was only a short video, but there was a brief frame in that video where he typed something in the browser. He was recording his screen. And um, for a brief second, we saw, you know, as he clicked on the uh, as he clicked on the bar, the, the browser bar, we saw his uh, top, you know, all these internet searches. And here's what we saw: um, there was oh, free porn videos and HD sex tube movies at X Hamster. Hmm, I said. That's good. Isn't it? LiveJasmine dot com. Live Jasmine. That's the website, isn't it? Where you 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 pay you know women to sit there and pretend to talk to you. You know, and you, uh, you know, have a little, you have this little thing, it's called, uh, what is it, a fantasy, Carl, isn't it? And and that one, obviously, the one in the middle, which obviously you can see, I've put a big red circle around, massage services in Swindon, Wiltshire, which is where Sargon's from. So he has been looking up massage parlours. Because Carl is obviously, you know, and it's it's purely... It's purely innocent because obviously Carl's a guy, as we know, as he said, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's a, he's a very athletic guy, a very sporty guy. He's always, you know, he's always engaging in lots of, you know, physical activity, you know, you know, gymnastics, fucking, you know, long distance running, you know, all that stuff. So he needs to find massage services in, uh, in, in Swindon because obviously he, you know, he's put his back out, may have bad joints, you know, that's all it is. Now, pl now, please, Carl, let me tell... Now, uh, please, Carl, explain to me. What did your wife... What does your wife think about that? What does your wife think about the fact that you go on X Hamster? And when you go on X Hamster, what do you look up, Carl? Or what does she think about the fact you're on Live Jasmine? Right? Which is a little bit more... Imp a bit more personal, isn't it? It's a little bit more intimate, that. And what does she think about the fact that you... You know, tell me, tell me about your massage services... Hmm? What services would would these would these possibly be services that include the words happy and ending? Would that be right? Because I, I have a right to know this, Carl. Because if you're gonna, because here's the thing: if you're gonna sit, if you want to sit there and have the opinion that things like you know, if you think cuckoldry is you know, because we, if you think women engaging in, in 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 sexual liberation and you know enjoying themselves and being you know, freely express you know and fucking whoever they want and doing so in a responsible way that involve that hurts no one, if you think that that is 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 somehow bad and you don't believe that anyone could possibly be into that, right, that's fine, but you don't. At the same time, get to enjoy, sit there and enjoy the fruits of the the uh, the, the the work, the fruits of women who engage in acts and or in, in 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 who earn a living doing things that you have just decreed would render them as having a less you know being you know you know would cause wider society to look at them with what? How would you feel if your wife was a cam girl? If your wife was a cam girl, and not even a live Jasmine one, let's say, fuck it, she does it for free. Why? Because she's a dirty slag. Well, let's just say that. Would that be bad, Carl? Could you not... Would that render her? Let's say, you know, let's say that. Let's say someone... Let's say a woman you know. Let's say your daughter. I know it's not your daughter. But let's say your daughter did that. So let's say she became a porn star, Carl. Let's say she ended up working in some, you know, gro in some dodgy, you know, sort of like being on the hand account. Uh, so what do you do for 25? 25 topless tits out or dresses Darth Vader, jack you off. Let's say they do that. You see, those women, Carl, they're someone else's, they're someone else's daughter, someone else's mother, someone's sister. Right? They, they could be, you know, fuck it, they could, they, you know, they're probably someone's wife, someone's girlfriend. And that's, a, and you have no problem. You don't know them, do you? You have no problem using and taking advantage of their, of the things they do, of their sex work. You have no problem with that. But if anyone, if you so much think of doing something in, a, in your private life, and keeping it private, by the way, then you're, you're someone of, you know, who is a, 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 someone of, you're a, you've got no virtue. 
You're someone who has no virtue. You're someone of a lower moral standing. And I think at this, I mean, at this stage, Carl, moral standing. I mean, I can't even think of a word. Do you know what? I'm just at this point, I'm like, I can't even think of a word. Because I'm just sat here thinking, do you know what? If this is, if, if this is what you, if you, you know. I mean, if you're a Sargon fan and you I mean, I'm just, I'm sitting there. Do you know what? I admire your, you for being able to live in a world of, with, where you can be such a monumental hypocrite and just... Act like it's no big thing. It's pathetic. It's so pathetic. Another thing for the woman is, who knows how it will change you? No, you don't, Cole. You don't know how things are going to change you. That, that's life, mate. That's life. In life, you, you do things. You, you, you're presented with opportunities or chances. And you take some, you don't take others. And some of them you regret, some of them you don't. But... If you take one and it doesn't turn out, you know, well for you, or it, you know, it, 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 it doesn't work out for the best, you don't sit there and go, well, in that case, this is wrong. You think, shit happens, move on, learn. Uh, you don't know what the consequence of doing these things are, because what you do is what you are. What you do is what you are. And the only thing that a woman does that Sargon is going to judge you as is based on your personal private sex life. That's, that's what you are. So if you, if you do this, that's it. It doesn't matter. Nothing else matters in life. Nothing else that you do matters. Just this. Right? If that's the case, Carl, what the fuck are you? A cunt is the answer. And if your habit is not being excellent, in fact, being degenerate, and I think you can fairly use the term degenerate for people who enjoy cockoldry, you don't know what it'll do to your own, your own tastes and desires. You, you don't know how easy it will be for you to be satisfied if you get used to this being your usual sexual routine. Yes, yes, girls, for God's sake. I know, you, I know that you've got sexual liberation and you have the right to indulge in whatever you know, acts, sexual acts, consensual sexual acts you, you so choose. Um, um, but for God's sake, you know, bear in mind, you know, that if you, if you enjoy, if you get to a point where you're enjoying yourself and you're enjoying sex far too much, then that's going to, that's, that's going to have a ne negative effect because unfortunately most men, you know, like Sargon, you know, uh, you know they don't want to be with a woman who's had a very rich and varied sex life because Fucking old Captain fucking two inches here. Oh, you know, this guy, he, he's not going to, how's he going to be able to sexually satisfy a woman who's, who has had a, a very, who's, you know, experienced, uh, you know, the, the wonders and the joys of sex to the absolute maximum. I mean, don't you just want some big sweaty blob to get on top of you and, you know, and then pump you three times and roll over to the point where you're not even sure whether it was in? Or, isn't that what you really want, girls? Isn't that what you just... Don't you want a man who, you know, who, you know, who goes to massage parlours in his spare time and sits up all night, coked off his tits on live streams, wanking to live jasmine? Don't you want that guy? Don't you want a guy like him? Yeah, you don't want to. Don't it? So for God's sake, you know, show some restraint, girls. You're the you're you're the alpha, are you? You're you're the alpha male. There ain't an alphabet long enough to fucking rank you as a letter. This is probably not the guy that you were looking to marry, right? And. Well, so every time you're in a relationship with someone, it has to be, it has to be one, the person you're going to marry. You couldn't possibly just be in a relationship for fun or in a relationship for, for I mean, why would they not want to? I mean, explain it. I mean, no one, you don't have to want to marry everyone. You could be in a relationship and go, no, this probably won't last. It's probably not going to, but most of them don't, Carl. 
Most marriages don't last. We'll say most. Fifty percent of marriages fail, and a, a, a certain percentage of the other fifty percent that don't are just dried up husks of their former selves. Right? You'd know about dryness, wouldn't you, mate? Who the fuck asked? Who the fuck asked you? Jesus Christ! If someone, if a woman once looks at you, Carl, and determined this is the guy I'm going to marry, then I don't see why anyone else hasn't got a shot. And I, I like I said, I, it, I think there probably is a part of it that will change you personally. And so I would be concerned about the, 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 the I, I don't call it moral, but it, it, I guess it is a moral, da moral damage. I, I love how you just sat there and for a brief minute you said, I, I wouldn't call it moral, because you know what you sound like, don't you, Carl? You know what this sounds like. Right? I don't, you know, don't protect, I don't believe that you're, you're saying all these things without being totally aware of what a fucking hypocrite you are. And then you just gave up because you thought, fuck my audience. I'm not going to be intellectually honest. No, this is moral. It's a moral concern. I don't need you to be concerned about my fucking life. And I don't need your fucking, I certainly don't want your morality to be the thing that dictates anything that I fucking do. I would do things just because I knew. If, you're, if I was into cuckoldry and it's something I did on a regular basis, do you know what? I would be twice as motivated now because now I can do it. Not only am I getting personal and sexual pleasure out of it, I'm also getting the satisfaction of knowing I'm pissing off Sargon of a card. This is something I do think that people should think about because... because no, no, Carl, you don't want people thinking about it because people who think about, people who think about stuff like this People who think, Carl, they don't watch your videos. It, this is the problem that young men have with, you know, teenage boys have with internet porn. Oh, oh, it's pornography now. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm perked up. Come on. Is it really does damage their own sexual tastes and their own ability to satisfy the, their desires with real women? Oh, so it has... I see. So pornography has a detrimental effect on young people, on young men. Are you, I'm sorry, have I started... Are, are you Gail Dines in drag? I'm, I'm just... I'm, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry this is a saga of... You're just sat there now talking... You're now talking about the damage pornography can do to young men. What it can... The damage it can have on them. Wow! That's interesting, isn't it? Let's... Take, let's take that and let's imagine instead of Sargon saying it, it's a it's a little it, it's it's a it's a small woman in a plaid shirt who's called gets called her Anita, and let's take pornography. Let's put video games in there, and we should yeah we should so so porn has a damaging effect on young men, does it? Yeah, it, 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 you know what, Carl? It can do if. You are, but that's why you should educate young men and you should teach young boys that the difference between fantasy and reality, that this is not, right? Pornography is, you know, it's fun. It's, look, it's sexy naked people. Fucking, we all enjoy that, you know, but, you know, I mean, obviously we don't want them, any of them in our family or be people we know because that would be disgusting and why the society would look at them as disgusting, horrible degenerates. But what, but, 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 you know, the thing is, you know, it's not real. It's not reality. It's interesting, isn't it? It leads to, you know, erectile dysfunction, difficulty forming long-term relationships. Oh, I don't know, Carl, you've, uh, you're married, aren't you? Has, your, has pornography affected your long-term relationship? I mean, we, you watch it. Or have you, have you, I mean, that was an old screenshot. Have you moved on since the massage parlours? You know, or have you mixed it up a bit? You know, when you go to the massage parlour, do you, do you spice things up a bit? You know, get a woman to do it. I'm just asking, it's none of my business. It's none of my business. But I think I have a right to know. And I'm going to judge you based on that. So go on. All this sort of thing that, that and I'm not... I'm not saying we should ban porn or anything like that. No, 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 no. You're not saying we should ban it. Well, you know what? Anita Sarkeesian didn't want to ban video games. Didn't stop you or anyone else going off 
and acting like that was the case, was it? No. But I'm going to deter- I'm going to decide that you do. If I'm starting it now, Porngate. It's going to be a movement. Hashtag Porngate. Because I saw some guy on the internet who makes videos claiming it's a destructive force. That it destroys relationships. That it destroy that it destroys I think that you know, I'm not gonna we're not gonna ban it, we're not gonna make it illegal. I'm just gonna stigmatize it so much that people won't wanna fucking live with it. You know, it will it will just cause so much shame and uh, it will you know it'll make people feel bad about themselves if they if they you know, if they don't do something about it. That's what I'm going to do. That's a much, much better and more, const- that's a much less destructive thing. There's, I mean, what ha- harm has it ever done to shame people for the way they feel? But we, we should recognise that there are actual consequences to doing things that in previous generations would have naturally been restrained because they would have been seen as being a destructive force. You know, Carl, it's a good job we don't look at that. Let's go, I tell you what, let's go back to the time in, in, the, in our history when women who had, part, who had children with multiple partners, possibly out of wedlock, were seen as disgusting whores. Let's go back there, shall we? Who the fuck are you to sit there and say that, well, back then this would have been... It wasn't restrained, Carl. Nothing's ever been restrained. Right? The legalisation of homosexuality, the embracing of gay... And, the, and, and gay people getting equal rights did not make, get, make people start being gay. Right? It already existed. All of this stuff already existed it just didn't happen it just people came out and acted like it like they didn't do it or pretended that it was disgusting and moral whilst they were fucking doing it in fact you'll find you'll find that i mean how many times have you seen the christian hate preacher who dedicates their life to fucking demonizing gay people always but always we know how it ends it ends with them getting caught by someone Right, in, in a public toilet, on their knees, with six geezers' dicks in their face. That's how it ends. In fact, every single p- one of these moral preachers that you see, every single person who's ever dedicated any time of their life to policing and trying to control and interfere in the lives of other people who are doing absolutely nothing wrong, who are doing nothing that hurts anyone else, other than the fucking lies that you cre- that are created based on what you think, what you reckon. And you want to talk about, you want to sit here and say that, you know, that's the thing, consequences. You want to talk about consequences? We're going to make the argument from, well, this used to be. So, so now not only have we got to worry about what wider society thinks, we should also consider what wider society 20 years ago thought. Again, Carl, do you really want to go down that road? You know how this ends, don't you? I do like the fact, however, though, that you have already, that you won't have to be one of those people, one of those moralising sexual conservative, anti-sex conservatives. You won't have to be like that. And we don't, we don't have to, expe- you know, we don't have to ultimately find out that you're a complete hypocrite because we already know that because you've already given us the screenshot that shows that you are someone who indulges in the very thing that you are fucking sitting here and you 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 you, dis, you disrespect and 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 demonize and stigmatize the people in who who you know who uh, you know provide that because porn can't exist Carl unless there are women out there who are porn stars massage parlors can't exist unless there are women out there willing to do it and men who are willing to pay them for it so don't sit don't you dare sit here and say about what we should be doing I do think that women should be careful because what do they want to become? Why don't you ask them? And when they tell you, why don't you just accept it? And if it's not what it's not for you, don't do it. However, I would I do worry that some people, Carl, watch your videos and feel that they what they want to become is someone like you. That's more terrifying than someone who than say a 14 year old boy who's on the internet wanking too much. You know, like I said, with, with the ultimate freedom to do anything you want, you now have to take on a lot more personal responsibility to prevent the negative excesses of the, the lifestyle and behavior 
that you engage in. Yeah, you know what the problem is with that, Carl, is that you haven't done anything in this video to demonstrate that there is a negative consequence to cuckoldry or open relationships. You've shown nothing. You have demonstrated nothing. All you have done is sit here and tell her, the, like I said, I lost count of how many times you started with, well, I think. And you've, you've said, you've said openly, even if people tell you what, tell you that, tell you that they, that, that, what, you know, what they think, that they enjoy this, this is what they're into, you've said you don't believe them. So please do me a favour. Hop it. What will this do to your children? And we knew that it was coming. Yes, folks, who had ding, 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 bingo. Who had, won't someone please think of the children? Can I, can I ask you a question, Carl? Do you, tell, do you talk to your children, right? Even the one who ain't yours. Do you talk to, your, do you talk to the two children in your house and tell them about your sex life? Do you do, you do that? Do you, do you go into graphic detail about what mummy and daddy do to each other? Do you? It wouldn't take long, I'm sure. Right? You could do it, you know, all you need is a space opera and a just, you know, and a, and a Henry the Hoover vacuum. You know, just turn the smile upside down so that can be your wife with a look of fucking absolute despair on her face. Just, you know, do you do the, do you know, did you know what your parents indulged in? Do you know how much your mum you know, took it up the arse? Do you know what parts of your mum's face your dad didn't come on? No, you don't, do you? Because people don't tend to, you know, these are, these are private lives, Carl. People tend to, you know, keep these things to themselves, you know, and my, you know, it's not just necessarily out of shame, it's just that it's no one else's business, you know, that's their, it, it's for them, right, the only people who insist on, on trying to impose that, you know, sexual, sexuality, and, or, you know, or make public, or publicly sign off about their own sexual exploits, exploits, are people who are incredibly insecure about them, they're the only people who care, and I think that that's, that's something that really matters. Does it? Oh well. That really matters. Like, for example, Destiny, uh, Steve Bonnell. He has a son, and he is also a willing cuckold. Oh my god. Well, I mean, I should cancel everything. How, how on earth can... How on earth can I fucking... C c well, I mean, oh, Jesus Christ, I mean, bloody hell, I'm... What am I supposed to... How can I carry on living now I know that Destiny is in an open relationship and he has a son? I mean, fucking... The world's coming to an end now, isn't it? You know, Carl, people's kids very rarely turn out to be, you know, exactly like their parents. You know, maybe his son will grow up with a much more open-minded and uh, and uh, and uh, you know a, a pr progressive attitude towards women and sexuality and relationships maybe maybe that he, he, you know st you know destiny has you know spoken to his son and he has uh, you know talked to him about how this is just uh, the way we do it you know it's not we're not saying this is right or wrong you know it's how you have to do it but we want you to know you know but let's can i just also carl do you do realize you know you're, there's lots of stuff on the internet about you. You do realise that, don't you? I, you know, and your kids are going to grow up. And one day, Carl, they're going to find all those articles, all those fucking screenshots about things that, about daddy, about the things he said about Jews and black people and the rape tweet and all this other stuff. They're going to they're gonna see and hear all of that. Have you considered what that might do to your children? The effect that might have? How that might, you know, that might damage them or how that might, you know, damage their perception of either the world or possibly of you. Have you thought about that? And he, he, he committed very firmly to the, I don't care, I know that she loves me when she comes back at home at night. It's like, okay, well, we've covered how she's probably going to find a guy whose personality she likes and actually respects physically. No, we didn't, Carl. Carl, hold on. What do you mean, we covered... We've covered that she's going to find someone with a better personality than you and then and, and, and someone she respects. No, Carl, we didn't cover shit. You asserted it with no fucking... Based on your own fucking twisted perception of what this is. That's it. You have just decreed that it is so. 
be based on your observations. Right? So don't you dare sit there. Oh, we've covered this already. No, we didn't. You said it. You just you just declared that this is what happens. Because God forbid, God forbid that the world is not how your ignorant, narrow mind perceives it. I don't. This is the thing about people like you with this. It's like it's OK not to be into stuff. It's OK to even sit there and go, I don't know about the other. That sounds pretty fucked up to me. But you don't sit there. There's a difference between that and just sitting there going, but hey, there's out as queer as folk, right? Different horses, whatever flow. That's what you say. It's like, it's your thing. That's you. That's your personal, no judgment. The things I'm into fucking disgust some people, right? Definitely the things you're into disgust some people. You know, that's it. I can't imagine. I'm trying to imagine how, how just insanely brittle and weak you have to be that and and how how much how much do you have to how how much self-loathing and self-hatred do you have to have in your soul to get to be to get to a point where the only way you can possibly sit there and and function without losing your mind and and to stop you from having a breakdown the only way you can you can interact with people is if you create this fantasy where everything should be how you think it is and if it's not it's not just well that's them it's wrong and not only is it wrong it is ultimately the source and part of a destruction of society of values of society's values and 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 of you know of all of our morality because that's what you've done carl you have created this wonderful fantasy where you figured it all out and anyone who disagrees is lying to themselves and they should just and even if they're not they shouldn't do it and if they any people who do do it should be should be shamed and, you know, stigmatised and demonised for it. Because the fact that there are people out there who can do these things scares you. Because you couldn't handle it. You couldn't possibly deal with the fucking... You're so insecure. You're so fucking... In, you feel so fucking inadequate. You're so convinced... You're so you're so convinced, uh, you know, you you know, you know, deep down, you, you might not have any reason to be. You just do. That's I pity you because I don't spend my time. I don't spend my life sat up at night worrying about what Sargon of a card is and, and his missus are doing in the bedroom. I would try my best not to even fucking, you know. Let that, you know, my brain would just reject it. But it, you know, I don't sit up and go, oh, I wonder what they're doing. I really should make a YouTube video explaining why I think this is wrong. Can you in fact do that, Carl? Because I can't believe that cuckoldry, which is a very niche thing. It's uh, And even if people are, I mean, the amount of people who have engaged in it is so minimal. It's so infinitesimally small that ultimately I can't believe that you think this is a massive deal you know so there must be other ones can you just do a video series carl in which you you know what you know one at a time just explain to me um why you reckon that you know and everyone else so we can all work out what you know take every single sexual act every kink fetish or you know or perversion whatever you want and just you know one at a time make a video explaining why you personally think that it's you know wrong and of course always bringing it back to blaming women and putting the responsibility on their shoulders please do that because that would be hilarious do you know who doesn't make videos like this carl men who are getting laid and loving it they don't make videos like that and leave you for him can i also say is even if that happens Say your missus meets someone else uh, and she leaves it for... So what? What's wrong with that? 
Is that why is that a bad thing? What because he, you know when you're with someone, you now need to hang on to them at all cost. You can't possibly, you can't do anything that might compromise the perception that she has that you are the fuck, you are fucking God's gift to her. You know, Carl, there's a thing called settling. You know, where women don't might not want. You know, they might there might be lots of things that they wish were true about you. Or there might be loads of men out there who they would happily, who they would fucking even think about it if they had the opportunity to fucking get it, have one dirty weekend in a motel with a locked door and a do not disturb sign, they'd open their legs fucking so quickly the pelvis would shatter. But they realise there's more to it than that. What I'm saying, Carl, is that your wife thinks about other men Hell, maybe she even goes on websites and talks to them on cam. Maybe she occasionally treats herself and goes down a massage parlour. But what does that do to the identity of, like, man and woman? The identity of man and woman. Oh, here we go. Because these are normally, I mean, I realise that the radical left, the whole point is to destroy the identities of man and woman. <laughs> You've got it. You've got us, Carl. Hands up. Sorry, you're right there. Yes, the whole objective of the left is to destroy the identities of man and woman. That that's all it's about. You know that is that is ultimately we want people walking around where man and woman. You know, the, you know what is it? We don't, we don't even know what are you? You know, that's it. That's why we have different. You know, things like pronouns. That's why we have things that like transgender, you know, those things, you know, people, things like people who are transgender. It's not about destroying what a man or a woman is. It might, you know, it's redefining it. It's made the conversation a little, it's made the situation a little bit more complicated. It's made it a little bit, it's, it, it's you know, it's, it's developed and grown it, but it hasn't destroyed it. It wouldn't fucking exist otherwise. The, the purpose is to destroy man or woman. You know what? If this, if you're an example of what I've got to be, I'll take the, I'll take the fucking radical anti man and woman left as you, as you can, because I would rather be on that side and not know what the fuck I am than sit here and be you and have to deny to the world what I am. Because you know what you are, Carl. You're a fucking loser. And not only are you a loser, you know it. And the only way you can live with it is by going on the internet and finding a load of people who are bigger losers than you. They're such losers that they watch your videos and think, yeah, he's, 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 he's the man. But I think there are strong arguments against doing that. Are there? Could you point me to a video that's got those in it? Could you point me to a, could you possibly point me to a video that's got these things called sources, you know, from some from like actual, you know, n you know, respected authorities? Because this ain't the video, Carl. This video, fuck it, I would say this video is bordering on being some kind of like progressive, you know, uh, gender communist, you know, gender communist propaganda piece. Right? There are probably people who watch this video because it's and it's so fucking shit that they think, well, fuck it. You know, these are, these people must be right. I think the the identity of man and woman have come about because they fulfill necessary social roles. Carl, the identity of man and woman. Now, what you mean is, Carl, is you you're talking about roles for men and women. Right. And they've come about again. What, what sort of argument is this, Carl? Again, you're making the argument from... You do realise that any opinion you now have that is either A, rejected by the majority of people in society, or even B, was once rejected by a society, or you know, one that is just, you know, or one that argues we should change something that's maybe been, you know, been around for ages. You do realise every one of those arguments you ever make are now fucking moot. Because I can just say, well, why doesn't this apply to them? And if you sit there and reject that as an argument, then none of this fucking matters either. It doesn't matter why they come about. If you want to, if you want to live your life, you know, following what are considered traditional roles, that's fine. 
What we're saying is that shouldn't have to be you shouldn't have to force people. You shouldn't sort of look at the idea and say, well, this is what women have always done. This is what you do realise that. I mean, in the vast expanse of human history, you know, women have only started getting equal rights in the last 100 years. Black people only in, in less than that. Gay people even less than that. Women in this country, you know, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, in this country, you know, marital rape was not a was 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 not a thing until '94, Carl. In the vast expanse of human history, right? Groups, women, minorities, and and gay people having having any sense of recognition and equality takes up like the tiniest like percentage, like five six. Two percent, one less than that. So we should. So should we reject all them now? You don't get to this. You're doing, Carl, what every demagogue and bigot has ever done, and that's claiming that where we are now, where we are now, this is this is fine. Right? Everything before, yeah, that that was. Yeah, we needed to change that, but not this. We, not we shouldn't change this. You know, because I don't want this to change. No, we're not. We shouldn't be doing this. That we don't need this. Those bits, yeah, okay, we did before, yeah. No, you don't get. It. You do know that, because that's what you do for a living. That's, that's your job. Your job is to come on the internet and talk shit, and and just be an ignorant, you know, be an ignorant prick, and sit here and you know pander to the fucking. Slobbering fuck it's the slobbering sad sacks of shit on your fucking subscribe. Some of them, some of whom haven't had that fucking Jesus. They got the sexually repellent fucking losers on your fucking. Thing. Who should all feel better? It's not your fault. You're a fucking worthless sack of shit. Who you know? It's not your fault that you, you know that there are fucking inanimate objects that have had that are sexually promiscuous compared to you. It's not your fault that women look at you and have this fucking they're fucking vagina almost heals over it's not your fault and i think that they also are a form of pride to the people who hold these identities yeah carl sometimes there, there are and you know what's do you know what the thing is isn't that sad isn't it really pathetic that there are people who have who live who 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 have decided that they're gonna put they're gonna be proud of themselves because of an arbitrary aspect of their life that they had no real choice in, no real say over, and couldn't have changed if they fucking wanted to. That's where that sort of pride comes from, Carl. It's because the truth is they've got nothing that they've never achieved anything, have they? There's nothing in their life they've achieved that is that is actually worth bragging about. But that, that's why they, you get people who have things like Brit national pride, I'm British, and they talk about the achievements and the accomplishments of other British people. And as if to say, well, they did that and they're British and so am I, therefore I can be proud of the fact that there are people who were born on the same piece of soil that I was born in that was arbitrarily designed and decided by us to be Britain. I can take pride in the colour of my skin because white people have done this, because I am a fucking loser who's done nothing. I have done nothing to be proud of. I have taken no chances in life. And rather than try and do something about it that's positive, rather than actually get up and say, damn it, I'm going to fucking try. Even if I fail, I'm going to try. No, what are you going to do? You couldn't do that because failure is not something you're, you can handle, is it? Failure is not something that your fucking ego could take. You couldn't possibly take the idea that something that you wanted all your life, a desire or something that you've always wanted to do, that you might fail at it, which is great. Take it from me. Right? Failure. Let me tell you something about failure and I don't think I need to tell you exactly why that's an awesome thing let me say failure is if you if you when you get used to when you try if you try stuff and you fail do you realize do you know what you realize 
eventually that failing is the best thing in life that you can do. There is nothing that you will ever, there is nothing in life that will fucking smarten you up and make you even more determined to do anything. Half the fun of trying anything new and different is failing. If you're not afraid to fail, you have the best chance of succeeding. But you're never going to succeed if you fear failure. If you fear failure, do you know what you end up? You end up like this guy. You're going to end up as someone who is so desperate to fucking make himself feel better. He can only do it by attacking and uh, and trying to you know undermine and uh, and 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 humiliate the people uh, people who disagree with him people who he who make him feel inadequate he can do that and and you have to make videos on the internet pandering to an audience of people who 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 you are going to sort of say this to as a reassurance but deep down inside, you know, I know I'm going to get Sargon fans pointing out, well, he's got a million plus subscribers and you've only got three. Yeah, you know what? You're damn right. But do you know what? I can get up in. Nothing's changed me. That's the difference between me and Sargon. That's really where our paths went. So that's why I think it's funny that we're the same age, because uh, the paths we went on were this. I decided that I wasn't going to I was going to live my life. By my on my own terms, I was not going to make excuses for the mistakes I made. I wasn't going to blame everyone else. I was going to own them. But I'm also not going to live my life apologising for who and what I am, because that's who I am. The difference between me and you is you decided you had to blame everyone else, because as we remember, I don't know if you do remember. Back in 2014, Carl wanted to be a video game developer. He even crowdfunded nearly £10,000 to develop a game, a video game, that never got made. And he kept the money. And then he went on to become one of the main spokesmen for Gamergate. You want irony? You failed. Did you get up and try again? Did you think, to think, what did I do wrong? No, you decided to do this. And the, that's it. You also failed at, your, you failed at your election campaign. You failed with all those petitions trying to burn social justice courses. You failed at everything, Carl. Yes, you've done well on YouTube. But the fact is, you know, you know that what you do on YouTube is nothing to be proud of. This is not, what you do on here is not something... That you should be proud of because it's fucking easy. Anybody could do it. Anybody could do what you do. Anybody can sit there and just collect a paycheck. But in return, what you've got to do is sell your soul. You've got to just, you know, you'll get, you'll be what you'll be successful. You'll have lots of adoring followers, but you've got to, you know, you've got to end up ultimately you know, in a position where you look yourself in the eye in the morning, Carl, and you fucking know it. You fucking know it. The reason you want other people to feel shame for who they and what they are is because that's all you ever feel. Every fucking time. I am not ashamed of who I am. I am not ashamed of, my, of what I've done. I am what I am. But I've lived my life on my terms and I've never once compromised. I've never sat here and thought, yeah, I, you know, maybe I should, you know, maybe I should do one of those videos. I'll just make a video saying, you know, why I left the left. And then I'll do what you do and I'll do what Dave Rubin does and I'll do what, you know, fucking, you know, all those other fucking, you know, uh, fucking all these other fucking you know, just bobbleheads on the right do. I'll do what you do. I'll spend my life trying to perform a comb over on my own fucking, on, on, the, on the bald spot of my fucking, of my own fucking sense of, um, on my psychological bald spot, my own sense of, 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 of self-worth and actually, I'll do that. Because you're scared of failure, right? 
So don't talk to me about your kids, Carl, because if your son or your uh, you know, or that, or, or, the, or your someone else's daughter. If they, if they look at you, all they're gonna see is a guy who, hey, you know, when I grow up, I want to be a fucking failure, just like Daddy. I want to be a moral hypocrite. I want to be a fuck. When I grow up, I want to be a hypocrite and a mor. I want to be a guy who, when you Google your name, you get a load of articles talking about how they love racist jokes and how they tell Jewish people to get over the Holocaust and how hilarious they thought it was when they sent out a rape tweet. Do you know what worries me about your kids, Carl? Is when I think of... I think back to that live stream you had with that... I don't know if it was that millennial fucking geezer or whatever. But the subject was... Fucking having sex with people who are underage. Do you remember how that concluded? That uh, that conversation concluded with you saying, well, it depends on the child, doesn't it? Now think about that. Think about what happens when your son finds that or your or your daughter. Do you, you know, think about that for a second, that they've got a dad who is concerned and is worried for the welfare of the children because their parents might engage occasionally, or they might have a, a non-traditional relationship. They might engage in a very unique or niche form of uh, you know, sexual or alternative sexual lifestyle. You know, you're worried about that. But if someone was to fuck them, we'll take that on a case by case basis. So do me a favor. So I don't expect, I don't know whether this video will convince anyone and I don't fucking care I really don't because quite frankly the people if you look at the comments of that video I mean if that were, if I made a video that had the comments under it that you've got in there I'd be fucking ashamed of myself I don't care how big that fucking ad revenue check is I don't give a shit I would I would feel suffer like these are the people these are this is my audience this is what I am encouraging, right? Have a dream, hold on to it, and shoot for the stars. And do you know what? If you fail, do you know what happens when you fail? The next day, you're going to wake up and you go, right, I'm a little bit, you know, my ego's bruised, my pride's hurt, my, you know, licking my wounds. But do you know what? I know, I know what I did wrong. I know how to correct it. And I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that I don't end up getting my ass kicked again and losing. So now I'm just a little bit more dangerous. Shout out to Paul Heyman. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Dick Coughlin. I'm ending the video there and I'm, there's seven more minutes of it. But I'm not going to subject you to it because it's all the same shit. It's just this over again. So if you have enjoyed this video, what, you know, thank you. Give it a like. Give it a, you know, whatever. Subscribe if you if you if you enjoyed it. Or, or don't, I don't give a fuck. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. It's all engagement. Post a comment if you would like to, you know, be have access to a lot more bo to a lot of bonus content uh, and to some exclusive podcasts, uh, audio book, and various other things. Then if you follow me and support me on Patreon, then you'll get access to that. Um, my name's Brother Neuro. There's no, where there's no sense, there's no feeling. And good night, and may God be less. <laughs>